We have all played with a helium balloon at some time, but do we know exactly what helium is and what its influence on the world is? Have you ever stopped to think whether helium has other applications that affect our daily lives? How does the existence of helium influence our lives? This is liquid helium, the coldest liquid known to man. Any other element at this temperature should be in a solid state. Using it, we can freeze any kind of material and study its properties at very low temperatures. For example, there are materials that are good conductors at high temperatures, but at low temperatures become superconductors. Using these materials, we can fabricate coils with which we can generate the strongest magnetic fields on Earth. These types of coils, which are cooled using large quantities of liquid helium, are the essential part of magnetic resonance machines. Using magnetic resonance, we can differentiate between white matter and grey matter in the brain, for example. Or we can identify the disc structures of the spinal column or we can define shoulder tendons or the meniscus of the knee in great detail. Magnetic resonances are also essential in chemical and pharmaceutical research. Other instruments used for low temperature materials research also require liquid helium in order to function. We have five pieces of equipment with superconducting magnets that are immersed in liquid helium and need liquid helium to work. And this means that we use around 150 or 200 litres of liquid helium a week. Including all our equipment, this represents a total of around 10,000 litres of liquid helium a year. What would happen if there was no more helium on Earth? Have you ever thought about the consequences that this would have? If the current reserves of helium on the planet ran out, I believe that the consequences would be very serious. Since many of the studies that are performed using superconducting coil technology would have to stop using them. If for any reason helium reserves ended, this would represent a major problem insofar as we would not be able to use our magnetic resonance units, and this would represent a major step backwards in the area of health. Also, apart from the consequences this would have for industry, which also uses liquid helium, it would be a serious blow to research carried out at low temperatures. I cannot think of an alternative source to helium in the current operation operational circumstances of these types of systems, and I believe it would be irreplaceable. As helium is a fossil resource and is running out, we need to recover it. Solving this problem efficiently has been the objective of a research team at the University of Zaragoza. This whole story began over 40 years ago in these very laboratories. Any faculty of science must have a department where physics research at low temperatures is carried out. This was the vision of Justiniano Casas, Chancellor of the University of Zaragoza in the 1960s. The Global Centre for Low Temperature Physics at that time was located at the University of Leiden since 1908, when Kamerling Onis managed to liquefy helium for the first time. One of Justiniano's students, Domingo Gonzalez, went to the University of Leiden to study and brought back the scientific knowledge upon which the low temperature laboratories in Zaragoza are based. Really, one of the most wanted people for the existence of helium in Zaragoza is this student of yours, Juan Bartolome. And I'm sure that he and you are to blame for this machine that we have here in this album. The first one in Zaragoza. The University of Zaragoza gang of those days, which consisted of me and a few others, came up with the idea that perhaps there was a more efficient way of recovering helium. And we proposed this in a very simple way by drawing two circles, almost a theoretical model. A very large plant that is not used much can never be efficient. And this is the first prototype that was made in the company. That is one of the great things about being a lecturer, seeing how your students overtake you. Well, I always say that the thermodynamics knowledge I learned in physics, and you yourself are to blame for that, because you were a lecturer in thermodynamics, and that meant we ended up with a scale prototype. And there's some history between that photo and this one, because these here are already the commercial pieces of equipment. 
As the English say, it was a change that turned things upside down. From those monsters that you have shown me, and that I still remember, to this equipment here. This here is tremendous. The ability you have to use one of these machines anywhere. Here we have our director of the Material Science Institute of Aragon at a laboratory in Japan. Ah, in Japan. <laughs> Where, to his surprise, he found the first machine installed in Japan recently. And this photo was taken on the day when the machines that we had designed and invented in Zaragoza were installed in Leiden. Wow, I feel privileged to see it. <laughs> this is the story of a thrilling return journey between Saragossa and Leiden, where liquid helium was first created and where it is now produced using our new technology. It is a success story in which the results of the scientific research have been patented and transferred to industry, thereby benefiting society as a whole. I believe that the new technology developed at the University of Zaragoza in collaboration with the Spanish National Research Council for the recovery of helium has an importance and significance that almost goes beyond our understanding. Helium reserves on Earth are limited and sooner or later they will run out and the ability to recover helium and not waste it is essential. Developing technology like this not only requires scientific knowledge, it also requires specialized technical personnel. And thanks to the research support services of the University of Saragossa, specifically to the cryogenic liquids and electronic instrumentation services, we were able to develop the first prototypes from which commercial equipment has been produced. What this has meant to us is that any research laboratory can have the helium it needs and can produce the helium it needs at any time, without having to produce an excess. This helium recovery project is not theoretical, it is now something palpable, it is now a reality. In the Dutch research group where I worked in the 1980s, we used to sing a song that said, helium is het helemaal, which means that helium is everything.